men. Um, if we uh, keep silence, what happens? Can't let us start. <laughs> We're crazy. <laughs> Allow us to be crazy. So we cannot uh, take our authority and take our priority uh, to this time. So we praise you, we praise God for his goodness and faithfulness towards us.
in the goodness of God. Lord, thank you. Our hearts are crowded with gratitude. We're so grateful to you for what we have been given from you. Lord, we need a, a, a new, a fresh outpouring of Holy Spirit. You pour out new wine through us to make us a holy vessel for the kingdom. Me. 
Today's scripture is Matthew chapter five, verse one, six. Verse one. Now, when he saw the crowd, he went up on about ten sides and sat down. His disciple came to him, and he began to teach them, saying, "Blessed are the poor in spirit, for there is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, who mourn, for they will be comforted." Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Amen. Good afternoon, everyone. Hello. Hi, it's great to see you. Why are you here, Pastor? Huh? Oh, yes, I'm going to New York after service. <laughs> Not before service. After that, I have to rush <laughs> into the, uh, the bus stop, uh, the, the temporary bus stop where I can uh, take uh, the uh, express bus to Incheon Airport. And I'm going to leave uh, here in the evening flight. Anyway, thanks for reminding me. I'm not going to miss it. <laughs> thanks to you. Okay, today I'd like to talk about uh, very famous uh, verses, but I just divided it into two groups, and I'm going to show you why. And uh, some of the titles for today is The Blessed. The Blessed. Okay? We already know that this Markham, uh, sorry, the Methian community is you know, the Jewish community, they just reinterpreted. The Jewish you know, turned into the new land of Jesus Christ. So we just call it uh, the New Testament, right? And also last Sunday, I told you that the birth story of Jesus Christ is resembled by the story of Moses, right? Now the, the birth, the, the killing of the, uh, uh, the, 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 the babies by the evil king. And you know, you know, the, the story is staying in Egypt and out of it, and the reason is so. Now, today's story is also resembled the story of Moses uh, by this. Okay, there are parallel religions of the life story of Moses and that of Jesus today. Moses actually ascended to the Mount Sinai, right? Jesus, where is he heading? Oh, actually, he is you no know, walking, ascending to the mountainside, right? To the mountain. And then, on top of the mountain, Mount Sinai, 
Jesus showed the command, the commandment of God, right? Just like Moses, Jesus is preaching the will of God, the blessed God. This is authoritative uh, command. And also, this typical phrase went up, went up mountain. This very, very specific phrase always associated with Moses. And this today's text actually uses that specific phrase in found in the Old Testament, used it here. So everyone, just like the members of um, a Median community who were actually teachers, rabbis, and scribe, uh, scribes of uh, the uh, uh, Old Testament would know, oh, I know this phrase associated with Moses. Now we see this in the last one. So this is the Ezekta. We know that teaching while sitting down is a way of showing authority. And this authority is also related from the tradition of Moses, who taught, who spoke, who made a speech toward the crowd, the Jewish people, while sitting, while he's sitting, and he's sitting on the uh, sitting back. So these are parallels, but parallels, but. Matthew differentiates Jesus, Moses, Jesus from Moses, like this. Moses actually taught the word of God, but Jesus himself speak of his words. This is different. And Moses was alone on top of the Mount Sinai, but Jesus actually invited his disciples and all the crowds so Jesus was all together. They were actually making a community of faith, or followers of Jesus Christ. And Moses spoke in the name of God, but Jesus spoke in his name. So these are uh, different. So Matthew describes Jesus like Moses, like you know, very very you know, prominent figure, but actually he differentiates that. Jesus is not a kind of new Moses, but the son of God. He is like actually, you know, in the tradition, Jesus is actually sharing the tradition of the Old Testament, but Jesus Christ is not a new Moses, but a new, actually, but the son of God. Okay? So qualitatively different from Moses. This is what Matthew wanted to Deliver to the crowds. Okay? Yes. So we have a, uh, uh, we just call it, uh, theoretically speaking, the theoretical term. We just, uh, this uh, text as the uh, beatitude, the double teaching. But anyway, we have. From of the 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 teachings, the the Greek teachings, starting from verse three down to verse ten, but these are actually four verses, uh, actually eight verses divided into two groups. First group that I just know uh, uh, cited uh, in this bulletin is about our our characteristic, our faith. Towards God. And the second group, starting from 7 to 10, is actually four verses and four verses. The second group is about our relationship with other people, our behaviors, our conduct towards other people. Okay? And if you read these uh, two groups carefully, you will see. That the last, actually, first verse, the last verse of the first group is about righteousness. 
And the last verse of the second group is also about righteousness. So, you can see some parallel. And also, it's actually, you don't uh, read this uh, with the, you know, the Greek sources, Greek uh, text, but if you just read this first four verses in Greek, you will just find pisan, pisan from this. So it will actually uh, appear. And also, each group, if you read it uh, by the Greek, is composed of 36 verses. 36 verses of four verses. Uh, 36 words of uh, four verses, and then the last uh, two, the second two, uh, second group with 36 words of uh, four verses. So we know that it's actually intended for two different groups. Okay. And then our beatitudes are the good teaching, the blessings. Actually, it starts from the word blessed, blessed are, right? Bacarius. This is about you know, happiness or blessings. Or even blessed means can be, uh, can be salvation. When you are saved from your you know, sins, how do you feel? You will be happy, right? You will be blessed. So this blessed means not simply, you know, okay, you are blessed, you are you know, you 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 made a fortune. It's actually beyond that concept. It could be celebration, it could be happiness, or it could be like some, some scholars translated it congratulations. Congratulations. Why? Because you are blessed. Why? You are. Saved. Okay? We have uh, the meaning. The first blessed persons are actually poor. Not poor. In Greek term, if you say poor, yes, it's actually you are poor. Multiple terms, you are economically poor. However, if you are looking at from the perspective of the Old Testament is more than that. It's, it has religious implications. It is like you are not arrogant. You're always seeking for God. Poor means from uh, the traditional Old Testament. You have to uh, look up you know, this Old Testament church because the congregational member of Matthew is actually teachers, the scribes, the scribes and they are actually uh, confirmed, confirmed actually, uh, they actually uh, the, this group of the, the people who are in the traditional Old Testament, and they actually very well known about uh, uh, this uh, tradition. So they know that when they heard about poor, they have some. Uh, more, uh, they have a more meaning about uh, the poor, this poverty. This is, it is about our total dependence on God. If you are poor, economically, you will have to rely on God. Right? And it is about our looking for God's mercy. Because you will need a kind of daily bread. Right? If you are poor, you don't have any savings, you don't have any leftovers, you need daily prayer, which means you will ask for God's mercy every day under every situation. So, also poor poverty is still you know, in this mental means endurance. You have to wait patiently until the salvation of God comes to your life. So poor in spirit means living in a humble life with a hope and prayer for the kingdom or of God or for the salvation of God in your life. 
and the need, our need for God and waiting for His reign over our life. That's the meaning of the poor. And the kingdom means Jesus is king, and He is going to give you those who are uh, those who are uh, poor in spirit. Okay. Next, and we see the person. Bless our mourns. Actually, mourns are like a weeping. They are sad. But it is not simply individual sadness or weeping. It is all about communal concept. Because in the Old Testament, when the Jewish people were mourning, they actually mourned about their nations. Their loss of their country. So they're mourning for their country. They're mourning for the restoration of the, their own country. So this communal grief over the sin of their country, the sin of the world. So those who are actually mourning about the sin, not simply their own sin, but also the sins of the nations, sins of the country, sins of the world, they will be blessed, they will be comforted. Okay? So, and the, there are third group of people who are blessed. Blessed are me. It is a Similar, it's a similar, similar concept with the poor in spirit. Because it is the meek is the opposite to the powerful or to the rich. They don't have any power. They are powerless. They are humble. Humble to each other. Right? They are poor in spirit. They will inherit the earth. The earth means the promised land of uh, the Palestine, uh, of you know, Israel, uh, the land of Israel. But at the same time, it is about the new, new earth, new earth. So they will be getting. It is not about their worldly success. When they are actually receiving, inherit, here is the land. It is not about our kind of investment to the apartment or the land, but actually it is receiving the kingdom of God. And the last one is the righteous. They are the people who desire righteousness of the first people, first, uh, 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 one is about this righteousness is about uh, about God, the character of God. They desire to see God's will accomplished in their life. They are also looking for the coming of the kingdom of God, their salvation. They will be comforted, comforted not by the people, but by God. Okay, this is. Uh, the meaning of our verses. Then we can apply this text into our life. We can think of ourselves as the blessed one. We are blessed. Why? Actually, it is our characteristics as the people of God. We are the one who are poor in spirit. We are the one who mourns not only for our sins, but also for our countries, for our nations, for our world. We are meek. I know you are so powerful, you are healthy, but we are. We are humble. We are humble before God. And we are humble to each other. 
and you will be righteous. Which means we have to look for the coming, the salvation of the kingdom, of the salvation of God and the coming of the kingdom of God. And if you see the tense, blessed are they will be. We know that blessings are already present because it's the uh, uh, present tense, right? Blessed are. R is the present. So, blessings are already among us, among the men. When you are faithful to God, you are already blessed. Right? We are already blessed. Through our faith, we are already blessed. Through this sermon, I like to emphasize this point now. When we are reading our text, we tend to think about it, the text individualistically. We, we tend to think, okay, there are some people, okay, they are blessed. I know they are you know, poor. Yes, I wish you are poor. Okay, you are blessed. We also think, you know, we tend to read this Bible verse from the perspective of individualism. Okay, you are blessed about this kind, this character. Okay, you are blessed with this kind of uh, character. But we have to realize that this is preached under the context of our community. It is preached, it is delivered within the community of faith. So, instead of, let's imagine this, just think about it. this group of people are blessed because they are poor in spirit. Okay, this group of people, I am blessed because I am mourning for the world. This group is blessed because they are meek. This is blessed, right? No, the Bible, that we read shows a little bit different pictures. Instead of pointing this group and pointing that group, this group and that group, they, they just blessed. Think about community first. Just about big song. This is a church. This is the community of faith. And then there in the community of faith, there are some group of people blessed for poor in spirit. Within this community of faith, there are a group of people blessed. They are born. Within this community of faith, they are blessed. They are meek. Within this community of faith, they are you not know, righteous, but they are blessed. Then, what makes the difference? You are the church, and within the community of uh, this community, some guys are blessed, and blessed, and blessed, and blessed within this group. And then we see my friends are blessed because of these characteristics based on their faith. We see this group of people who have a good characteristics out of their faith, they are blessed, saved, and saved, and saved. And these group of blessed uh, of God are present within our community of faith and then influencing each other. These group of people who are blessed is leading uh, they are living an exemplary life that affects each other. And then we are all together blessed. We know that a community of faith, the church, is not perfect. There are good, there are people with good character, there are people with not, so, not that much good character. They are different, and we are all different. 
But the text for today, if you see, not from the individualism, but for the, you know, from the perspective of community, and it will show you some difference. Persons with such a good character for his period, need and more, can be found in each of us within our church. Right? Then, this community of faith, we, the church, are blessed because of the presence of these persons, people with good character. We are influenced by them. We are served by them. We are actually influenced and challenged by their faith in God. So instead of you know, looking at these grow people individualistically, they are, they are people. Okay, they are less. Instead of thinking these are the last group, the blessed group, and blessed group, if you are looking at this blessed group individualistically, separately, these group of people doesn't affect at all, each other at all. However, if you try to read and see, you can see this picture of a group of people who are blessed within the boundary of the community of faith. We will know that these blessed ones are blessing each other. These group of people are affecting each other with this good care. Because we are living together and we are blessed now. We are blessed because of these people who are present among our community. So let us just remind this. Not only that we are blessed with this character, let us just see that our community of faith are actually blessed because of the presence of the people who are blessed. So, again, then you can be have a, you can have some challenge that probably we need to be one of the people of good character, of, of the blessed, so that we can affect, influence each other, affect each other with these good characteristics. Amen? Let us pray. Dear God, thank you for your reminding us of being blessed. We just confess that we are blessed through our faith, we are poor in spirit, weak, annoying, and we are trying to be righteous before you. But at the same time, oh God, let us see these blessed ones are present among us in our community. So that let us see who they are blessed so that we let us see we are blessed so that we can influence and affect each other to our faith. In the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Amen. <laughs>
that has been called, has been blessed. Uh, we ask, Father, that you use us to be a blessing to the nations. And so, Father, as we give to you your tithes and our offerings, use it for your kingdom to, to reach those who are around us and wherever you take us, Lord God. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Good afternoon, everyone. Hello. Uh, let's take a short time to just say hi to the people around us. <laughs> hi guys, there are new faces and old faces who have come back. <laughs> uh, welcome for for those who are sort of new. Uh, please expect to be called up. <laughs> okay, uh, for next week's prayer will be Chaya and scripture reading will be by Jackie. And please remember, this month we have a couple of things in store. So there's going to be the trekking on October 28th. We're going to go to, uh, what's the name of the place? Sotongkor. <laughs> um, I'm not sure if you have any Yes. Let's read another word, so don't worry, you will not be hungry. <laughs> All day, maybe sometime while walking. <laughs> right. And also, we will have a movie day. And um, the movie was shared by Nathaniel, and so you can watch that on October 15th. So if you're free after the service, you can join us in watching that. Uh, Pastor Song is still with us right now, but he will be flying to New York in the evening. So please pray for him. He will be back after a a few days. So next week we'll have a video um, sermon by Pastor Song. So we'll still be here. So please come and join us for worship next week. Invite your friends as well if they're available. Thank you. Oh, 